the Singer Elite CE 677 has a built-in alphabet and numbers and punctuation. So here we're gonna talk about how you can put together letters, make quilt labels, or put a, a identification on something that you're making. We're also doing a handful of videos on your decorative stitches, doing applique, doing a blanket stitch, and why you wanna stitch out a stitch book, because our stitches look so much better when they're sewn out, not just pictured on our screens. We also have in the links below in our description, what we talk about as our Stitching Cosmos online course. Here's another one of our quilts. Each block is a different technique and accessory foot, along with using decorative stitches that were included with your machine. So here's what we're going to do. First off, let's go down here where we can pull out and be reminded of all the great stitches we have. Don't forget there's actually two levels. So as we kind of push one in and pull the second one out, we've got tw all the rest of the decorative stitches and the alphabet. So the only way to get to the alphabet and the memory is to go to menu four. Now, even though this has a very small screen, one thing you will notice when we go to number four, that we are going to then type in a, a number associated with one of these letters. So for the letter A, it's stitch number 11. So if I do 11, we can see that if we just sewed it, we would have a row of A's, A-A-A. All right, but if we wanna string them together and spell out a name, we can touch the picture that has the floppy disk on it, and you're gonna notice everything disappears. Keep in mind and keep an eye on this number here. So for example, if I wanna put in an A, B, C, I mentioned A is 11, so I'm gonna do 11 and it went to one, one. When I do 12, because that's a B, it goes to two, two. And let's just do thir 13. Now I have three letters in my memory. So at any given time, I can keep an eye on this, how many characters I have put in. If I use the arrows, I can go ahead and arrow back, and maybe if I needed to delete something or uh, insert in between as I need. So if I wanted to come back, let's go ahead and stitch this, and then I'll show you how we can put in a more usable word like a name or even a date. We have put on the clear foot, the one that's more appropriate for stitching the decorative stitches. And as you stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it real quick. We're gonna engage the pattern end and by doing so, I can go ahead and just stitch it and, and get the, well, I guess I got one letter. Okay, well, let's try that again. We'll go back to the first letter and we'll start at the beginning. So this should be now our A, there it is. And then our B, and then our C. <laughs> and we have our letters. Yes, I am working with some variegated thread, which is kind of fun to do. You get a little different look. Do keep in mind that you are not to trim these letters apart. If you did, that's gonna to start to unravel them. Uh, they are meant to stay connected. So how would we go back and put, say, a name in? So you'll still need this out so you can kind of identify which letter is needs to be entered in by its coordinated number. And then on the very bottom row, there is a space that's number 58. So if you were gonna be doing like Happy Easter, you would wanna have a space in between there. So let's just do a quick clear. We've got the trash can and I can see I'm all the way cleared out because my screen is empty. And so if I just wanted to type in the word, let's do singer. And so singer, we're gonna start with an S is stitch number 29. So I see that in, and then I, 19, in, 24, I feel like I'm playing bingo here, G, 17, and E, 15, and R, 28. Okay, so I can see that I have six characters in, so I feel like, like I got all the ones in. I would always do a test 
before I started to stitch. And then that way I would not be surprised by an accidental extra letter being uh, stitched in the wrong order. I like that it locks at the end. Do make sure that you're using a stabilizer underneath the fabric. You do see that the width of or height of the letters is actually the width of your presser foot. So do keep in mind that that is how tall your letters will be, but it's really fun to be able to personalize something. If you're doing a quilt label and you had multiple lines, you're gonna need to do each line, sew it, clear it, put the next line in, sew it and then put the third line or the date, whatever you're, you're working on. But I think you can have some fun with those letters. Give the machine to the kiddos. They can spell out things. They could even stitch on like construction paper, kind of fun to do. They could have some fun getting familiar with sewing very easily if you showed them just a few things that this machine will do. I hope you'll check out all of our videos, including the free ones for the Stitching Cosmos online course. We have the We have a link at the end here where you can start watching these videos from the beginning. Uh, there's also a link in the description below of the playlist, as well as other things that if you need more bobbins or needles for your Singer sewing machine. So I hope you're having fun and never stop learning.